you could go after military individuals, you could go after whatever in relation to military conflict. But these Palestinians that were expelled, these were civilians. They had nothing to do with whatever dynamics that took place. And therefore, the moral obligation that Israel has is to rectify its actions against the Palestinians. Israel refuses to rectify its actions against the Palestinians. It still blames the Palestinians for everything under the sun. And it still blames the Palestinians for whatever occurring relative to the internal dynamics. Now we have a different demographic problem. So we need to figure out Israel's demographic problem in its own state. If anything, unless there is a recognition of this, Israel cannot continue to oppress and dispossess the Palestinians on a daily basis while expecting some normal existence within historical Palestine. Therefore, I would say, if you want to make the claim that Israel is like any other state, and therefore, why are you picking on us? I say, no, for the Palestinians, Israel is not like any other state. Israel is the one that dispossessed me. And until you understand that, my relationship to you is not because you're Jewish. It's because you took over my land. That is the understanding that I want to it is not your religion. It is not your belief. It is not what you celebrate. It is the fact that my land has been taken by you. And had it been anyone else, we still would have resisted it and we still have it. When the Crusaders came to Palestine, do you think that we said, no, 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 we can't discriminate against you? No, because they took our land, we resisted. That's the basic understanding. And to claim that you're anti-Semitic for doing this, is disingenuous and really does not begin to address the basic contours of the conflict on the problems in Palestine. As you guys know, the Israel Apartheid Week, we're applying for uh, boycott, divest, and sanction. Uh, sanctions uh, to the apartheid in Israel, to the state of Israel. Um, to, to have a successful campaign, we need as much support. I just need to quote this, this basic piece. This is from Vladimir Jabotinsky, so we at least understand the kind of thinking that. This is 1923. Uh, he's the founder of uh, Revisionist Zionism, uh, one of the antecedents to the, some of the major leaders of Likud. Let me give you the following. Quote, 1923, it's actually was uh, quoted in the Iron Wall. A voluntary reconciliation with the Arabs is out of the question, either now or in the future. If you wish to colonize a land in which people are already living, you must provide a garrison for the land, or find some rich man or benefactor who will provide a garrison for you on your behalf. Or else, or else give up your colonization, for without an armed force, which will render physically impossible any attempt to destroy or prevent this colonization, colonization is impossible. Not difficult, not dangerous, but impossible. Zionism is a colonization adventure, and therefore, and therefore it stands or fails by the question of armed force. It is important to speak Hebrew, but unfortunately, it is even more important to be able to be able to shoot, or else I am through with the blame at colonization. I respect Vladimir, Vladimir Zetensky because at least he was clear, honest, and direct. What I oppose today is the double speak that occurs from many pro Israelis who try to deny the intention of what took place in history and then begin to blame the Palestinians for the fact and the consequences of their action. Thank you. There's petitions outside, please sign them on your way out. Also, there's a workers' rally tomorrow for the workers here at UCI to insource them. It's at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, if you have more, if you want more information, just uh, ask outside. Um, 
and the Zuck Welfare for coming out. We also have more events coming this week. Uh, please pick up a flyer on your way out to, um, you know, the kind of, uh, the Zuck Welfare.